Time now for the Flaming Sword broadcast with Brother Tony Van Hooser. Welcome to the Flaming Sword program. This is uh, Brother Tony Van Hooser. While you turn your Bibles to John chapter 3, for the last three uh, uh, weeks we've been teaching on the new birth, what is commonly, commonly called regeneration. Jesus said in John chapter 3, in verse 3, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. In verse 7, Jesus said, Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. Your only hope, your only hope for heaven is in the new birth. Your only hope in eternal life is in the new birth. Listen, Jesus didn't say, Except a man be a Baptist, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Jesus Christ did not say, except a man be baptized, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Jesus Christ did not say, except a man be a church member, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Jesus Christ did not say, except a man be good, keep the golden rule, and give to charity, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That is not what the Lord Jesus Christ said. A person can be a good person, keep the golden rule, give to charity, be baptized, and be a member of the biggest Baptist church in town and still go to hell. Jesus Christ said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. My question for you today is, have you been born again? There are some people that believe that truth is relative. The Bible teaches that truth is absolute. Either you've been born again or you haven't. It's that simple. Either you've been saved or you haven't. Either you're going to heaven or you're going to hell. It's that simple. God's word is absolute. It's not relative. Jesus didn't say you may be born again. Jesus Christ did not say, you might be born again. Jesus Christ did not say, you should be born again. And Jesus Christ did not say, you ought to be born again. Jesus Christ said, you must be born again. Once again, I ask you, have you been born again? Once again this week, we're going to look and see what takes place when a person is born again. Last week we saw that nobody in the Old Testament was born again. In Hebrews chapter 10, in verse 4, the Bible says, For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. The sins of the Old Testament saints were not taken away. They were covered. We know that because David wrote in Psalms chapter 32 and verse 1, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. If you were under the law before Jesus Christ died, you would have to live by the law to the letter. Be and because of the sins that you committed, you would have to make a sacrifice, a physical, literal, animal, bloody sacrifice. And because of that, you were always in danger of losing your salvation and going to hell. But he, we who are under grace and born again have no fear of going to hell. Why? Because when John saw Jesus Christ, he said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Our sins are not just covered. Our sins are taken away. A man or woman that is born again is spiritually circumcised. Another thing that takes place when you're born again is you become spiritually circumcised. Their soul is cut away from their body. As I said last week, that would explain 1 John. In 1 John chapter in, uh, number 1, in verses 8, the Bible says, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, 
and his word is not in us. But in 1 John chapter 3 and verse 9, it says, Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. Like I said last week, your body or flesh is not born of God. You know that? Simply by the fact that you're headed for a grave. When you're born again, your soul is cut away from your body. In a sense, your soul becomes sinless. Then whenever your body messes up, there's no charge made to your soul. That's how, how we are able to have eternal life. Remember in Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 20, it says, The soul that sin it, it shall die. Before you're saved or born again, your soul does whatever your body does and sins right along with your body. But after you're born again, your soul is cut away from your body and it, in essence, becomes sinless. Another thing that takes place when a person is born again is that the Holy Spirit comes in and dwells in the believer. In the Old Testament, under the law, uh, the Holy Spirit did not dwell in a man. Now you get this. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit was said to come on a man. To come on a man. And it could leave a man at any time. The Bible says that Saul had the Holy Spirit. Then lost it. Then an evil spirit came on Saul. David was in danger of losing the Holy Spirit. In Psalms chapter 51 and verse 11, David said, Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit could come on a man and leave a man, depending on whether or not the man was in fellowship with God. But in the New Testament, Jesus Christ promised us the Comforter. In John chapter 14, verse 16, Jesus said, and I will pray in the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. You get that? Forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but we know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. When you're born again, the Holy Spirit comes in you and dwells in you. And those dumb idiots running around asking you, do you have the Holy Ghost? The Bible says, if a man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. When you're born again, the Holy Ghost comes in you and dwells in you. Soon after, the Holy Spirit begins to make a Christian out of you. And the kind of Christian you become depends on how much you yield yourself to the Holy Spirit. When you're born again, Another thing that happens is that you're adopted into the family of God. You're adopted into the family of God. There are people that say that in the Old Testament a person was saved by looking forward to the cross. There's only one problem with that. The people in the Old Testament weren't looking for a cross. They were looking for a deliverer. Somebody that would deliver them from bondage to the Romans, but not bondage from sin. When Jesus Christ came, he came preaching repentance and meekness. But they were looking for someone who would fight for them and deliver them. So they rejected Jesus Christ and turned him over to be crucified. But they didn't realize when the blood of Jesus Christ spilled to the ground that it was spilt for the whole world. That's why and how we become the children of God when we're born again. Jesus Christ told the Jews in John chapter 8, verse 14, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. If you not been born again, then your spiritual father is the devil. When he tells you to do something, you break your neck getting it done. When he tells you to go out and get drunk, you do it. 
When he tells you to commit fornication, you do it. When he tells you to go out and get high, you do it. When he tells you to shut that preacher off, you do it. You're just a good little child of the devil. That's what you are. What you need is to be adopted. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 15, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if you say that everybody in the, is a child of God in this world, then you're deceived by the devil. The only way that you can become a child of God is by being born again. Another thing that happens when you're born again is that we're promised a new body. The new birth is not all spiritual. We are promised a literal body. Romans chapter 8, verse 23 says, And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruit of the Spirit, even ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption, to wit, the redemption of the body. Our soul is redeemed immediately when we're born again, but the redemption of our body will take place at the rapture. Just as sure as I'm here in this room t t today, this evening, I'm going to get a perfect body. We're not sinless right now, but thank God we sin less every day. One day, I will be sinless. How about you? Have you been born again? You say, how can I be born again? I'm glad you asked. Jesus told Nicodemus in verse 15 of John chapter 3, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That took place at Calvary. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. If you've never been born again, believe on Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Wherever you're at, at this moment, bow your head and ask him to save you, and he'll save you. You know how... Uh, People remind me of um, a drunk I met down in Mobile, Alabama one night when I was reading this text, preaching from uh, this text on Nicodemus and Jesus Christ. I remember uh, about seven years ago, I was out down in Mobile, Alabama, preaching on the street. And this drunk come up to me and uh, I asked him, I said, can I give you a track, sir? He said, he said get away from me. He said, uh, he said, I'm saved. I said, you are. I said, how come you're drunk? He said... My mama told me that I can go out and get drunk. So I can do anything I want. She just died. And I thought to myself, you know, uh, she will, must not have been too much of a mother. But he said, he said, I can ask you a question you can't answer. And I said, what's that? He said, he said, what's the shortest verse in the Bible? I said, Jesus wept. He said, okay. Why did Jesus wet, wet? And I said, because they didn't believe on him. He said, no. He said, because his best friend, Nicodemus, just died. You might not even get that. See, Nicodemus, it wasn't Nicodemus who died. It was Lazarus. See, some people don't know the Bible. Some people are not saved. That's, that's all there is to it. Either you've been saved or you're not. My prayer is that you are saved. And until next week, this same time, this is Brother Tony Van Hooser. My prayer is that you stay right with God and true to his word. Tell me who's gonna buy and who's giving it. You've been listening to the Flaming Sword broadcast with Brother Tony Van Hooser. The mailing address is 2540 17th Avenue Northeast, Hickory, North Carolina, 28601. Join us Saturdays from 545 until 6 for the Flaming Sword broadcast here on WBAR. Mm -hmm.